Today, we're going to unbox the Estes Mercury Redstone Model Rocket Kit. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today, you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a real rocket scientist. Today we're going to unbox this kit from Estes called the Mercury Redstone. Now the Mercury Redstone is a famous rocket because it was the first American rocket to launch astronauts into space. Now these were suborbital flights, it wasn't orbital, um, but it was an astronaut and they did go into space. Um, so as I'm looking at this here, first what I'm seeing is a plastic bag and I can see the parts on the backside, but I'm interested in knowing what scale this is. And I don't see what scale it is because this is a real rocket, so it's a replica of a real rocket. Um, I don't see what the scale is, but I do see that it's a 2.05 inch diameter. Um, that's all I have to go on. Now 2.05 is an oddball size tube in model rocketry. Um, it's between a BT-60 and a BT-70. So that shouldn't really matter to you unless you break your rocket and you know like you have to replace a section of tube because now you're gonna have a hard time finding a tube because it is an oddball size. It's not a size that we carry here at Apogee Components. Um, so I'm gonna open it up uh, using a knife. And the first thing I notice is that big tube. Um, I'm guessing this is 18 inches long because that's the typical length and it seems about right. Um, and it's, uh, like I said, two inches in diameter. It's paper. Um, it's got a nice finish on it. It's uh, craft paper um, and it has a glassine wrap. Now glassine is, um, is what they call paper that's been flattened very, very smooth and it's so thin that it's almost clear, but it's actually made out of craft paper, so you can actually glue to it. Um, and that's what that one's made out of. So that's a really nice tube. And the next parts that I see as I'm opening this is a bag of plastic parts, and this will probably be the mercury capsule itself. So we'll open that up. And we have the big parts right here. You can see that these are injection molded plastic and they look pretty good. There's no flash on them at all that I can see. Um, these are probably high impact polystyrene, so you can use model cement to use it. Like if you were building a RC, not an RC, um, a plastic model car or a plastic airplane. Um, that's the kind of glue that you would use. Um, these are the little nozzles that go into the escape tower. Um, this is the escape tower, and that looks pretty nice. Um, I have no idea how it goes together. But that would be the bottom of it, and that would be the, the top. And you're probably going to glue it all together. Somehow, I'm sure the instructions will tell us. Um, but it does look pretty good. The capsule is actually three pieces. It's going to go together like that. And I'm sure you're going to build it along this right here. Yeah, just like that. I'm just kind of interested in how it's going to go together because I have never built this rocket. Now, Estes has had a Mercury Redstone in their lineup probably since the 1960s or 70s. Uh, but this one, from what I understand, they re did the tooling on the nose cone to make it a lot nicer and it does look beautiful. Um, so that's the injection molded parts. And what else we have in here? Okay, so this was the, uh, what we call it the face card and that's gonna be how you're gonna paint it uh, because you can tell it's not painted. <clears throat> uh, then we have this bag of parts right here. This looks to be the engine mount. And this uses a 18 millimeter diameter tube because that's 18 millimeter tube right there. And these are your small parts. 
Um, there's the launch lug, and there's this um, piece right here, and that's for the engine hook. That keeps it so when you bend the engine hook back, um, it keeps it uh, attached so it doesn't fall off. And then this piece right here is an engine block. Um, so this is, like I said, a 18 millimeter tube. So that's a fairly big rocket for uh, that size motor. So now this is going to use, um, I'm guessing, C engines. And that's what Estes shows right here. Just you're not going to use A's or B's. You're going to use a C6 or C53 as that's the only motor that Estes recommends. But that's not the only motor that you can use in the kit. Because um, there's motors made by Aerotech that are also 18 millimeters that you can use, Aerotech and Quest. So um, in Estes, it's a C53, but you can use um, C16s from Quest, and there's a D engine also from Quest and Aerotech that will work in this rocket. And we will have on our website a chart of all the different rocket motors that we feel that would be appropriate for this rocket. Okay, so that again is your launch lug. Engine hook right here. This is a metal engine hook and it's spring steel, um, which is the typical Estes hook. Um, it's nice. Uh, this is the um, rubber shock cord and I like how long it is. That's good. It's always, it's always better to be long. In fact, right now I'm writing an article for the Peak of Flight newsletter, which you can subscribe to at the Apogee website. And this article is about shock cords and what the different materials are and why you might select one over the other. Now, Estes uses the natural rubber shock cord, so these are stretchy, um, and it provides shock so that when your nose cone goes off, it all stays together and it, it, uh, it comes off so fast that in order to catch it, to keep it attached, it's got to be, it's got to be strong enough or stretchy enough. And the Estes ones use um, st stretchy rubber. Okay, what else we got here? This right here is a plastic parachute, and I'm just trying to see if they have on their face card what size it is, and they don't say it. Um, so we'll take a look and see what size this is. So I am guessing, so if, if this is an 18 inch tube, I'm guessing this is probably uh, 14, 15 inches long. Maybe this is longer than 18 inches, um, but that's not quite an 18 inch shoot. So that's probably 14 or 15 inches in diameter. Uh, the nice thing about it is the strings are already pre-attached. Um, so you don't have to spend time tying the strings onto your parachute. Um, and it's nicely colored, um, purple and white. And Estes uses multiple colors, so yours might not be exactly the same color, but it will be the same material. And this is polyethylene. Um, it's actually called low-density polyethylene. Um, so that's a nice strong parachute, and it's, um, it is plastic, so you have to be careful to put enough wadding in the rocket to protect it from the heat because you don't want it to melt into a little ball because that would be bad because then your rocket's going to come down fast. Okay, so what else we got? Oh, what else was in here? This is your warranty card and some basic information on launch site dimensions. Um, so, for example, on uh, you can't see this probably, but for a C engine right here, we want a launch site with a dimension of what dimensions or units are this in? Um, it's in Spanish. I can't read Spanish. Okay, feet. <laughs> um, for a C motor, 200 feet on a side. That's not very big, but the larger your field, the better, just in case the wind catches your rocket and drifts it further away than you expect. Okay, so the last part of this are these, the flat stuff. Um, this right here is your centering rings. And there's also some details around here, like these details right here. 
I can see these probably go on the tips of the fins. Um, so there's that detail right there. Um, I'm not sure what these little squares are, but we'd probably find out once we start building it. Um, again, these are balsa wood. This is 3 16 inch balsa wood. Um, it's nice balsa wood and it's all laser cut and the pieces I can tell they're gonna come out nice and easy. Uh, okay, so those are your fins. And then we have this right here. This yellow sheet is a protective sheet for the decals. Now these are water slide decals. So that means that you'll cut them out and then you're gonna dip them in water and they'll, the, the actual coloring will come off as a nice clear sheet with just the color on it. Then you'll just slide that onto your rocket and this one right here is a wrap. So on the rocket here, you see this uh, pattern. This is called a roll pattern. And that pattern is right here. And so you don't have to paint it because these, if you've ever painted roll patterns, they're really hard uh, because every one of these little corners is a, a great little spot for paint to bleed. And it gets just really messy. Um, and then there's also the United States um, is a two-part one. There's another wrap. Um, I like I like here that the uh, the capsule. This particular rocket is modeled after the, every NASA rocket had a, the capsule had a name. Um, so this one was called the Liberty Bell, and the Liberty Bell. If you know anything about American history, it has a crack in it. And that there's that crack right there. And they put that on the decal right here. So you can have your Liberty Bell capsule. Um, the nice thing about water slide decals is they're thin. Um, and so when you put them on the rocket, it almost looks like paint because you can't see a raised line like if it was a sticker type decal, which are much thicker. The downside of uh, water slide decals is they are so thin that they can rip really easy. So just be careful when you're applying these. Um, on our Apogee website, in our advanced construction video section, we have a video on how to apply water slide decals like these um, so that you handle them gently and so that they stick on your rocket really well. Uh, okay, and then finally here we have the instructions and, you know, it has the parts list on the front and it shows you how to glue everything together. Okay, so this is how you glue the capsule together. Ah, okay, awesome. Um, then there's some wraps right here that you're going to cut out and wrap it around the rocket so you can mark it where the fins are going, how to assemble the multiple pieces of the fins. Um, your engine mount, and then, you know, final construction on putting all the little details on and attaching the parachute. And there is some painting that is involved. I can see it right here on the bottom part of the rocket. There is a paint pattern down here. So I was saying, you know, if you ever painted a paint pattern, like a roll pattern like this, uh, well, you get the practice down here at the bottom. They show you exactly, you know, how it should look when you're done painting. So this is the Estes Mercury Redstone Rocket Kit. It looks like a really good kit. It's a scale kit. The only thing that um, I am unsure of is what actual scale it is. And because I don't see it here, but hopefully we can find out. <laughs> Uh, you'll find it here at Apogee Components. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. Thanks for watching.